Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. Time for a shop tour. All right, so it's been a long time since I've done a shop tour uh, video, and the last video that's up on my website uh, is not reflective of how my shop is laid out right now. So I've been asked by a couple people to do a shop tour, and uh, it's about time. So uh, I'm gonna kind of walk you around, show you what's going on, and give you kind of the philosophy why I have things where they are and, and how they're situated. Now, the last time I redid the shop, I was kind of trying to address a few massive problems. Uh, the first thing being, my main focus, the reason that I come to the shop, and it's, it's my full-time job, uh, is to make pen blanks, and I sell them. And uh, the other thing I do is content creation. So obviously YouTube and now Twitch. You know, I, I do a lot of turning and I do a lot of casting, and that's really what everything that I do. And I realized my shop was kind of not set up to efficiently do those tasks. I had a lot of uh, space dedicated to milling wood. I used to, you know, be pretty much just a woodworker uh, for a long time. And that's how the shop was really set up, was to break down, you know, mill wood, do that kind of thing. I just don't really do a lot of that anymore. And so I wanted to rearrange the shop, have a dedicated turning space, you know, turning area, and really focus on workspaces, work tops, where I can do specific tasks. So I'm gonna kind of start at one end. I'll explain what's going on and, and why things are where they are. I have kind of certain uh, reasons for putting certain tools in certain areas. And uh, yeah, so I'll kind of give you the breakdown of how my shop operates. All right, guys, here is the entrance to my little shop area. Now you can see that it's kind of covered by plastic. Uh, the original intention for that was to kind of separate my dad's area from mine and uh, keep the dust, uh, I guess, in my area. Now, again, I share a shop with my dad. Now this is his, his shop, 4,000 square feet. He's a machinist, so you'll see uh, he's got some mills and uh, punch presses and drill presses. He makes a watch wrench that takes apart high-end watches. So he's got his own little thing going on. He's got a couple of cars. He, he's got a 56 Buick that he shows. That's his pride and joy. But we got a pretty big space here. Lots of storage, lots of room. And he gave me a 20 by 40 space in the back of his shop that he wasn't using. So let's enter into the shop. Now, the way that I have things set up, it's kind of set up in zones. So I'll kind of pan around. You'll see there's a lot of machines right here. This is what I call the dusty zone. In the middle, it's kind of the separator. I do tasks and things, you know, random things like that. Over here's the lathe area. And along this kind of front or far wall, that's where the resin casting, the computer, and my 3D printer are. And that's the no dust area. So I kind of set it up in zones. And I guess you'd even call the, the turning area a zone. Um, the idea behind this is I wanted to keep all the dust on one end of the shop. The other thing is all of these big machines require dust collection. And so they're all kind of combined into what I call the Island O'Toole. I got an 18 inch bandsaw, a planer, drum sander back there, a couple of disc, uh, disc sander and belt sander, my uh, Powermatic joiner, and my saw stop. And so these guys are all the big dust makers. And the nice thing about this setup is I didn't really need a lot of dust collection hose. Everything's pretty much you know, as short as possible, as short as I could get it, uh, and right kind of there. The longest hose goes to my table saw. It had to go all the way down and around the corner, but everything else was really short hoses, which not only increases the dust collection efficiency, you know, it's gonna work better as, uh, if you have shorter runs, but it also just makes it cheaper. You don't need to buy a bunch of duct work. The other problem is we have 16 foot ceilings. <laughs> and hanging dust hose, you know, like the, the duct, duct work did not appeal to me at all. So all of the dust machines are hooked up to the, that's a three horsepower collector over there. And then I got a couple of things that don't, you just really can't collect dust on this, my 14 inch bandsaw. This was my grandpa's actually, and I restored it. Uh, but there's really no good way to collect dust on that or this belt sander. 
and I have my router table kind of I don't use this I use it very infrequently so I just kind of pushed it back to the side it does have dust collection in the back there and I can hook it up if I need to uh, but for now most of my work is resin casting and turning so I don't really use it much on the far wall that's where I keep all my wood storage cutoffs and all kinds of random stuff above I have some storage for just random things but lumber storage is along the back wall uh, you saw my I have my miter saw there it is hooked up to a little shop vac but that one is kind of I, I categorize that as a non collectible dust maker so it's over in the back wall now in this back corner kind of see there's a frame built and that's where I hold uh, plywood storage sheet goods and this is a kind of a neat design I, I just made kind of a frame out of it with two by fours but I have these these screws that run through the wall got two of them where's that other one one kind of back in there but those screws can be used to clamp the wood now I don't have a lot of sheet good storage because I don't use it that often anymore but uh, it can, can compress those sheets and kind of help keep them flat I like vertical storage of wood because if you store it horizontally like I have on this shelf undoubtedly you're gonna need the one on the bottom but if it's vertical you have access to all of them and so that's how I do my rough lumber and all that kind of stuff too now one of the main tools that I use in my shop is my table saw this is what I cut all my pin blanks out with so I'm using this thing almost daily gets a lot of use the rest of these big tools don't get that much use because I don't really mill wood that much uh, if ever so um, and I also have a sheet good breakdown table that's covered with stuff because I don't I just don't do a lot of actual woodworking anymore now one of the goals for my last rearrangement of the shop was to make a turning dedicated area so I have that over there now you'll notice there's a big fan behind the lathe there in the corner this is my Air King high velocity fan and I call that my dust collection system for the lathe and it's basically it blows it onto the dust making section of the of the shop again trying to kind of corral the dust and just keep it all in one area now I have my lathe set up in the middle of the shop in this position for two reasons one is that that fan blows the dust one way but the other nice thing is I can get all the cameras that I need anywhere around this thing. I got access to all four sides. I can get any shot that I need and it's easy to set up. Uh, so that's kind of the reason for having it that way. I kind of like having the lathe out in kind of the middle. The other nice thing is right behind me is I have my desk or this kind of worktop where I keep all of my tools. Now it's kind of super cluttered right now. However, I kind of know where everything is and it's in arm's length. That's kind of the philosophy of most of my little workstations is if I'm going to do turning, I want to be able to have all of the things that I need right there with me. So it's kind of messy, but, but it works. The other thing is I got my grinder uh, for sharpening my turning tools right there. I mean, it's just a couple steps away. I can true or, or tune up the, the edge and it's good to go. I'm back to turning. Now, when I redid the shop the last time, one of the main things that I wanted was lots of workspaces, tabletops, workstations. And so you can see I have lots of desktop spaces and I've tried to keep them task oriented for the most part, but this big assembly table is where a lot of things get done. Now you can see my camera's set up right there. The beauty of the position of this table and the size of it is I can get a camera on any angle and you can get a lot of you know you can get big projects done and you just have a lot of space once I clear it off I also sometimes use this workbench uh, this is the first real woodworking bench that I made a long time ago pretty rickety but it holds work when I need it and I do my pen assembly on this so you see my clamp is set up this is nice because I can get a camera onto it pretty easily and uh, this is when I'm live streaming or just shooting videos it's a good spot to have that but it's a good kind of general purpose workbench uh, at this point that's what I use it for and then I also have my outfeed table uh, I usually sometimes I'll just use this little corner I can clamp onto it and get stuff done if I need to and I don't really care about the surface of it so lots of lots of good spaces to 
to get random things done. That's what I'm finding that I do is a lot of random work. Now I keep my good hand tools in this chest. I built this when I moved to keep all my hand tools, you know, in uh, safe, I guess. Um, so I just keep them in there because I don't do a lot of hand tool woodworking anymore, but uh, every once in a while, you know, I definitely pull them out. Um, on top of it, I got to clear it off because that's where I keep a lot of the Dunkin' Junk <laughs> stuff that we do on the show, but, uh, but they're there when I need them. Now, along the back here, I got my drill press, which is usually set up for uh, drilling out pen blanks. That's what I do the most with it, but uh, you know, obviously I drill all kinds of stuff. And I have a giant storage rack kind of in the back, and this is where I keep all of my casting bulk supplies, the resins, cups, and all that kind of good stuff. Now, again, the back wall, this is where I don't want dust. I got my computer sitting on this desk, and this was built by Casey Martin. Uh, he's over at Wine Country Pens. Uh, he does some awesome casting as well, so go check out his YouTube channel. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. But he built this computer specifically for live streaming for me. And as you can see, I have a dual monitor set up, and that's on a pole that's it's made for standing desks where you can convert it if you're sitting, you know, the, the monitors can swivel up and down real easy. And so you can move the, the pole, you can move those monitors, uh, you know, swivel them out of the way or uh, move them up and down and all that kind of stuff. And so when I'm doing live streaming, when I start, or if I'm resin casting, I'll be standing right there and I can keep an eye on the chat and whatever's going on the, the broadcast the whole time. So keep that there and then in the middle I'll, I'll get to the casting area last and cover that in detail. I also have this other little workstation that I sometimes do random things at but it holds my uh, micro or not microwave uh, toaster oven that I heat the molds up with and that's again you know an arm's length from the, the casting table and I keep my pen kits and tubes and things kind of in this little area. The rest of this is just, I got a cabinet up there that holds random stuff. Um, and then when I back up here, tucked around the corner is my 3D printer. And I uh, haven't done as much as I'd want to with that, but I definitely have more plans down the road. And I built this little uh, table for it. It holds all my filaments, holds the 3D printer itself, and it kind of keeps it behind this little wall separate from the dusty area. Now, on to the casting area. So this is where I spend most of my time. This is what I do <laughs> on a daily basis, is make pen blanks for the most part. Now, I've got it set up. You, know, you can see that I have four pressure pots within arm's reach, and I also have an air hose right in the middle, and that'll reach any four of the pressure pots, and so I can get through lots of castings and uh, make those pen blanks. Now I've set up the pressure pots on these little kind of rolling carts. I thought it might be useful to have them mobile. Um, and to take care of the, the wobbliness, I have concrete bags that weigh it down and it's super you know, solid, sturdy. Um, I've bolted the pots to the top of this thing and so I can crank down on the clamps and it, they're not gonna move or do anything. And with the combined weight of that concrete, that those tables don't move anywhere, but if I need to roll them out or move them for some reason, they are mobile. Now underneath there's a little bit of storage for different molds and things. That's kind of an extra bonus uh, on those carts. Let me get around here, show you the other one. Again, uh, I got some concrete, but it holds my gloves, molds, and all my kind of solvents that I use, acetones. So it's a pretty handy thing to have. Now in the middle, I have this nice workstation. And what I've done is I've covered it with HDPE. I bought a sheet of this. And that makes it pretty easy to kind of clean up, get the resin to pop off. And I also use these little silicone mats. Um, they're even easier because they're so flimsy. You know, you can pop the little resin dots off real quick. Now I have, again, everything right within arm's reach. I've got my resins, my mixing cups, my stir sticks dies all that stuff right hand what well, wait a minute we we got a shop visitor today the peapods came in to say hi <laughs> so if you're not familiar with the peapods uh jamie page made these guys carl jacobson bought them at an auction 
And we're kind of using them as a channel pass type thing to kind of introduce, you know, different channels to people. And so Carl sent these to OJ over at OJ Woodworking Crafts, who sent them to Yak Branson, who has sent them to me. And so I'll have links to everybody's uh, YouTube channel down in the show notes. Uh, but welcome to the shop, Peapods. They're just saying hi. And I'm going to send these down to Braxton Worthland down in Vegas. So these guys are going to get a full tour of Nevada. <laughs> awesome job on these, Jamie. And a great idea, Carl, for uh, passing these guys around. These guys are going to see a lot of the country and probably internationally too. So be looking for these guys in different YouTubers' videos. And uh, Carl's going to eventually put up a, a playlist with all the different channels that these guys appear in. So anyway, back to the shop tour. So the pea pods are hanging out where I keep all my dyes for resin casting. And on this little open shelf, I got all my molds. So I usually use the six blank molds. That's these guys, the big ones. I got lots of them ready to rock. Um, and then on Dunkin' Junk, I do a lot more of the three blank, pen blank molds. And then we do stoppers and things with these. So those are the ones that I use the most. They're right there, handy, ready to rock. And I even have little mixing or, or I guess measuring spoons ready. These are really good to use for the, the Perlex type powders, the Aluma dust. And another handy thing to have at your casting station is a paper towel roll. So I have that handy. I actually rip up, oh, I don't have any right now, but I, I usually rip them up into quarter sheets and just kind of clean up any resin spills and things. Now up in the cabinets, I also have more casting supplies. Um, this is where I keep all my Perlex and Aluma dust powders, as well as, you know, random. I don't use these uh, two bin molds or, or anything as often as, as the HDPE molds, but those are all ready to rock when I need them. And then over here, I have my pine cones that are stabilized, ready to be put in blanks sagebrush and then other materials. I don't use other materials as often for, I don't have too many uh, blanks in my shop that I keep, you know, uh, inventory of, but keep all that kind of stuff nice and handy and ready to rock. So I guess that's about it. The only other thing that I will mention about my shop, I have a lot of lights. These are all, I have 12 of these four foot two bulb uh, daytime or daylight bulbs and it really keeps the shop very bright uh, it makes it nice and easy to uh, you know I don't really need a whole lot of extra task lighting for most things uh, it is handy to have a light you know for turning uh, so I do have that and I also have lights underneath this uh, these uh, two cabinets in the casting area because I'm kind of butted up against the wall here and so that just kind of gives me a little extra light to see what I'm working with um, and then underneath here, I also have a, a rolling cart where I keep some supplies, which isn't really that big of a deal. But on top of here, I have all of my color samples. And so I don't really use, you know, I don't really do a lot of color matching anymore. Uh, the blanks that I have are seem to be, you know, the ones that people want, the colors, the team colors and all that stuff. But Anytime I do need to get a specific color, those are right there handy so I can kind of check them out. So, I'll just give you one more quick pan to make sure you haven't missed anything in the shop. Well, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed checking out the shop today. You know, it's always an evolution, and I'm sure there's going to be many more of these as I kind of, it, things dawn on me that, oh, it'd be so much better if I did this with my, you know, put this here or something like that. So I know everybody's always kind of, you know, trying to upgrade their shop, or maybe, you know, you start doing something different in your shop. That's, that's one of the big things that happened to me. You know, I used to be a woodworker, and really now I'm a turner and a, a resin caster. So, you know, you got to change the shop to suit your needs. So if anybody has any questions about anything you saw in the shop, tools, shop organization, well, I'm going to say organization, <laughs> my shop's pretty cluttered right now. And, uh, you know, when you end up doing this type of thing full time, 
you find that you're working on 50 different projects at once and there's really no such thing as cleaning the shop. That's what, <laughs> that's what I've kind of had to give up. I, I, when I was doing this as a hobby, when I got into woodworking, I mean, I would keep my shop dead clean. I would clean off, like vacuum my tools and stuff. And that's just out the window at this point. So I, it's kind of a organized disorganization at this point, And I just keep tools in the same place, hopefully. But anyway, if you have any comments or questions, definitely leave those down below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button and definitely share with your friends. Uh, that helps a ton. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. Uh, and if you're kind of new to the to Envy Woodworks, again, you know, I, I do this full time. I, I make pen blanks for pen turners. So if you haven't checked out my website, my pen blank shop, definitely head over to nvwoodworks.com. And don't forget, I am also doing live streaming on Twitch. So that's where I do the Dunkin' Junk experiments. And uh, we do everything live. The audience can kind of get their input in and see what's going on, ask questions live. It's a blast. So definitely check out my Twitch channel. But until next time, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.